we've reviewed square roots and we talked about positive square roots, negative square roots, and the positive and negative square roots. We've also looked at evaluating square roots and evaluating radical expressions. So now we're ready to take a look at, at quadratic equations. And what a quadratic equation is, is it's an equation that can be written in the standard form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And, and this is the case where a does not equal 0. So a can't equal 0. Now b can equal 0. And when b equals 0, it, it then becomes ax squared plus c equals 0. And c could also equal 0. And then it would become ax squared equals 0. And that's if b and c both equal 0. So let's take a look at, at an example. And how we're going to solve this, let's say we have an example, x squared equals 4. The way we're going to solve this is the first thing you want to do is get the x squared term by itself on one side of the equation. And then you're going to take the square root of both sides. So in this first one, we already have it so that x squared is, is by itself on one side of the equation. And we're going to take the square root of both sides. So you'll take the square root of x squared, which is just going to be x, because x times x is x squared. And then you'll take the square root of 4, which is 2. So x is going to equal 2. And that's, that's all you have to do to solve, to solve that one. Now another one could be, what if, what if x squared equaled 0? Okay, well, we take the square root of both sides, and you get x, the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 0 is 0. So x equals 0. And that makes sense. If you put in 0 for x in our e e original equation, which was x squared equals 0, if you put 0 in for x, well, 0 times 0 is 0. Another example. If we had 3x squared minus 48 equals 0. Now, is this in standard form? Well, yeah, it is. We have our, our ax squared term, which is the 3x squared. So a is 3, and then minus 48. So in this case, b is 0. So, so it's actually in this form, the ax squared plus c. And in this case, c is negative, so it's minus 48. So what we want to do is get the x squared by itself on one side of the equation. So we need to add 48 to both sides. And that'll give us 3x squared, because 48, or negative 48 plus 48, well, that cancels out. And then 0 plus 48 is 48. Now we can divide both sides by 3. And you'll get, well, 3x squared divided by 3 is just going to be x squared. And 48 divided by 3, well, 3 goes into 4 once. So 4 minus 3 is 1. Bring down the 8. 3 goes into 18 6 times. 6 times 3 is 18. So it's 16. So 48 divided by 3 is 16. And now we can take the square root of both sides. So the square root of x squared is just x. And then the square root of 16 is 4. So our answer in this case is 4. But remember, when you take the square root of, of a number, you're actually going to go for the plus or minus, the positive and negative square root. So our answer is going to be plus or minus 4. And, and back at, at the other example, that one should have also been plus or minus the square root of 4. So our answer should have been plus or minus 2. And this other one, since it was 0, can remain 0. But if, if you caught that, that this was supposed to be plus or minus 2, good job. 
and this is going to be plus or minus 4. And the reason why we make it plus or minus is because we start with a whole number, and we take the square root of it. It's not just asking for, for the square root of 4. It's asking for, well, if x squared equals 4. So when you take the square root, you need to find both the positive and negative square root. Because when you plug in your answer, whatever you get for x, into the original equation, so in that first one it's x squared equals 4, when you plug in a positive 2, it works, right? 2, two squared is 4. And also when you plug in a negative 2, it also works. And same thing with, with the one we just did. If you were to take that, that positive or negative 4 and plug it into the original equa equation, a positive 4 and a negative 4 both work.